Hi, it's Rich from Planet PE, and we're looking at the final aspect of the skeletal system, which is the additional factors that affect the skeletal system. So we all know that there are lots of benefits of taking part in, fig in regular uh, physical activity, and that those benefits are really, really big for us. So as we go into this topic, we want to understand about these three factors um, that might affect our skeletal system. But before we do that, let's have a look at what's on the screen. So uh, the benefits of taking part in regular exercise are huge. People who take part in regular exercise are more likely to live longer and are less likely to develop serious disease. Now that for our skeletal system comes in a couple of main areas. So the first one we're going to look at is arthritis. Now you may have heard of arthritis before and the most common um, arthritis is osteoarthritis. So if you see um, the picture that we have in front of you, um, there's some explanations that you might be able to look at as we go through. So on the left, you've got a healthy joint and on the right is a joint that is experiencing uh, or has osteoarthritis. So what is arthritis? Well, it's a condition where there's an inflammation within the synovial joint. And this normally causes uh, quite a lot of pain and also some stiffness in the joint. So uh, you'll find that people who have played sport for long periods of time might actually suffer from arthritis because um, of the impact and the general wear and tear over a long period of time. Now, what happens is that the amount of cartilage actually gets reduced, which then, as you know from the previous podcast, is going to result in the, both of the ends of the bone from rubbing together. Now, within that there's going to be a breakdown of the cartilage there's going to be impact within the bone itself so that is essentially what the arthritis is so uh, this natural breakdown of cartilage tissue can actually um, be made worse by any injuries to the joint and that's where people who play sport might experience this maybe more than the average person so and particularly about earlier so um, footballers such as Ledley King is known to have not been training very much when he played for Spurs and one of his big issues there that he would have to get his knee drained and one of the problems from that is because of the um, the increased lubrication of synovial fluid because it's trying to find one way to try and help the joint as much as it can. However, regular exercise can prevent arthritis which seems a bit funny. Sport and exercise um, generally quite good for us but within sport obviously we get a lot of injuries and as it says it can make that worse but generally regular exercise is going to prevent arthritis so during physical activity your joints will produce more synovial fluid as we know and not only will this improve the joint lubrication but actually it will reduce friction between the bones um, and this will also pr provide some important minerals to the cartilage so just like those short-term effects that we spoke about in A5 in the last podcast, um, that's going to be a thing that we're going to find as a long-term benefit for us as well. So when we are exercising and we're getting these minerals and things like that and we're getting uh, less friction between the bones, that's got to be a good thing. Now exercises such as stretching are also going to improve the joint's range of movement, so therefore we increase the flexibility of it. Now that also lengthens the ligaments, holding the bones in place, and then that's how your flexibility improves. So these are these additional factors or these long-term benefits. Now the next one is about osteoporosis. Now this is quite a common thing to come up in um, our exam questions. So if you look at the pictures in front of you, we've got the difference between a healthy bone and a bone that has osteoporosis. Well, osteoporosis is the weakening of bones caused by a loss of calcium or a lack of vitamin D. Now, vitamin D is really, really key because um, without vitamin D, we can't actually absorb um, calcium to the bone. So think of it like the glue that's holding calcium to the bone. So there are um, issues with people who have lack of sunlight, who actually don't get a lot of uh, vitamin D, and that's going to actually cause you to lose the mineral density and maybe become more brittle or fragile within the bone. Now the issue for us as sports people is that therefore it's likely to break under stress. So there are uh, lots of sports people out there who might suffer things like stress fractures, but if we're the general population you might find that if we um, experience osteoporosis so we've got this thinning or more brittle bone that we're more likely to get these these fractures of the bone so um, it's really really key to make sure that you know calcium is is abundant that vitamin D is there and one thing that's really going to help all these things is exercise that as we've found out before that by doing exercise we increase the uptake of the minerals um, within the bone and that is going to result in the mineral bone density increasing now resistance training is a really good method of preventing osteoporosis 
but in your um, exams it will ask you for any weight bearing activity so basically anything that isn't swimming so when you're thinking about osteoporosis we're getting this uh, increased uptake of minerals which is then reducing the chance of getting osteoporosis but the final thing is age so when we look at age we need to think about these questions so how can age affect the skeletal system and what can we do to prevent any long-term damage so we've got to remember that the skeletal system is constantly growing and repairing itself through things like osteoblasts and osteoclasts that we're removing tissue and also depositing new bone and generally exercise and sport will benefit you now the exception of this is resistance or weight training in children because actually it can be quite dangerous um, and cause them more harm than good now the reason for this is that a child's bone is still growing and by putting too much force on them you can actually uh, damage those epiphyseal plates which are found at the end of each of the long bones and damaging these plates during childhood it actually stunted bone growth so in your schools you might find that you couldn't you weren't allowed to go into the gym uh, in a certain age you know maybe in key stage three you weren't allowed anywhere near it maybe in key stage four you were particularly in key stage five you probably find that you're allowed in there a lot if you have a gym in your school and the reason for this is that we can't put people under under stress when their bones are still growing so if we crack these growth plates um, or we have any issue to them you can actually find that you get stunted bone growth so again when we look at these about how it can affect the skeletal system what can we do well the choice of activity is is a key thing so as long as we don't put them into too much pressure so maybe plyometrics at a certain age isn't a good idea weight training is not a great idea you know thinking about the sort of surfaces that people play on so we now have lots of 3g's in the schools things like that whereas it used to be maybe sand based astroturfs that were a lot harder so there's lots of things that we can do to try and uh, alleviate these problems so we're now completed unit a or the learning aim a um, for these for the a and p unit so as we go through we will move on to the muscular system um, in our next few podcasts so keep on revising keep trying uh, questions along with our information and please post any comments um, or subscribe if you haven't done that already and check us out on twitter at planet underscore pe cheers